I do it. I do it. I do it. Yeah, I like that. Boy. Boy. Nigga, fuck your time, nigga. I waited my whole life to be the man of the hour. I really can't lie. I was the man when. Um. You know, a love for hip hop is what motivated me to build my company, which by the time I was 23, we had to deal with Atlantic Records. Um, basically, you know what I'm saying, I started out an MC, had to make beats for myself, had to put the records out, so I learned every aspect of the business. Um, and then it was, you know, people who didn't believe, or didn't see the vision I had when I was younger, and that was partially the motivation, you know, proving that what I believed in was correct. So I guess between the love of hip hop and you know, achieve, you know, just the, the, the self motivation of achieving achieving a goal was really what motivated me. Chick bad, my chick hood, my chick do stuff that your chick wish you could. My, my chick bad, my chick hood, my chick do stuff. Um, that was a great experience because um, I believe that one of those kids will be inspired to be great. And if that's just a, you know, a, a, a particle of what inspires them to do it, then, then I did a good thing. Um, felt real good to take my artists into the school too, and um, you know, let them experience that with me. But um, I think, you know, most of all, when I look at those little kids, I saw myself when I was a little kid and I know how my experiences in grammar school influenced uh, how I looked at the world or the person I became so it felt good to complete that cycle you know what I'm saying Well, I got the, the scholarship because <clears throat> I won a competition, a uh, state competition for video production. And really, I got into that just by being a, 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 a tech head, you know what I'm saying? I'm from the, the hood, but I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm uh, a smart dude and, I, and, I, and I'm into like technology and gadgets and shit like that so um, for me uh, it was the sanctuary of my grandmother's basement and um, cause you know I used to could, could go down there and experiment with music and DJing and electronics and you know computers uh, you know whatever I got my hands on, and while being down there, it kept me out of a lot of trouble. And um, one thing leads to the other, in as far as development. So by the time I got to high school, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that they were teaching us was easy for me because I had already did all that experiment in the basement. Thusly, I got the scholarship. And uh, ended up at Columbia. In the back seat of a cottage, chop it up and do it now. Seven double L P M, flying out to them house in the P M. Uh, yeah, it has, cause uh, my brother Dundee um had you know developed a dream similar to mine, and we were working together on music. Uh, before he passed and him passing kind of showed me how short of time we have um, in life 
Um, so it gave me, it reignited my passion and my drive to accomplish um, what I want to accomplish in the time that I have. Um, which obviously would influence the type of music I'm making. Um, and it also, you know, makes me feel like, because I have unreleased music of his, <clears throat> so it makes me feel like, you know, I don't really want to hold on to it. I want to put it out in the world and make sure that it's properly, you know, the music I'm making, I'm saying. I want to make sure that it's properly presented in the way that I envision it. So when I create music now, you know, I'm putting it out as fast as I possibly can. And all of that is a result of done passing and showing me uh, our time here is short. And you gotta live live your dream while you got life to live. point of my career is hard to say but I would say it's right now um, being in LA working on music with my friends and um, having had a few hit records in a row because there was a point where I felt like people had kind of counted me out. So, you know, every victory at this point is is, is extremely sweet. Um, and I think just like this moment in my career right now where I can really do what I want to do, how I want to do it, is the high point we talking about career achievements, then I think it was uh, when I went to the Grammys for the first time, and uh, after vowing to be there a year earlier and achieving that goal, and sitting around surrounded by musical legends. Um, that was a moment that was very special in my career to me. The perfect storm. The perfect storm. It's Twister and Chris it's Brown, you dig? I got a new one for you. I got uh, Let's make a movie, baby. Let's make a movie, baby. Uh, tracks, tracks. Just making better music. I'm still a student of music. And a true musician or producer never stops being a student of it. So like right now, <clears throat> you know, I just take the, I'm taking this opportunity to do research and develop new techniques and really uh, <clears throat> focus on making better music. And uh, through that, I know that the mathematical result will be greater successes. There's a lot of producers I admire. Um, I would say the three or four that most influenced me were uh, Molly Maul, Gala Rock slash Chaos One. Then would come R. Kelly, but the most influential would probably be Dr. Dre. Um, I still look up to all of them. I learned a lot about producing from listening to uh, the 70s and 80s producers, uh, whether it be Quincy Jones, uh, Prince. All the greats, of course. Roy Ayers is a big influence. Um, 
but as far as my contemporaries, uh, my homeboy No ID, uh, Anybody who really making dope beats right now. And what I mean by dope beats, I don't mean like hit records. I mean beats that I that I feel like I hate that I didn't make it. You know. So, but those are the producers that I admire. Admire producers who have the ability to develop acts and develop sounds. I really don't admire producers who are, you know, just selling beats to the highest bidder. And, you know, I really admire the producers who develop sounds and artists and do whole projects. You know. I'm not into collabing with random people, <clears throat> but I would collab with, of course, any of my influences. Uh, me and No ID collab often. Um, but some of the younger cats, uh, I'm not sure. I, I have to have a chemistry with a producer, too work with them because uh, which I've only had with a handful of producers, maybe two or three K-Tone, No ID uh, um, and it's because there's no egos involved so I guess the decision would really be about you know, could I go in the studio with the person and we truly collaborate or would it be somebody just trying to force their opinions or their, their their style or tastes on me. So it really depends on the individual. I wasn't really aware that Lil B makes beats. Um, I like his music. Uh, I like what he did for himself. Um, but again, I wouldn't collaborate with somebody that I don't really know. Uh, you know, their personality. Um, not to mention, uh, it had to be some. He had to have some 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 skill set or talent that I felt like I didn't have in order for me to respect the collaboration. My favorite website at the moment is tfsociety.com because um, they are putting this interview together. <laughs> so shout out to tfsociety.com. Make sure y'all check out tracksinc.com.